O great spirit, saints and sages of all times, of all places, O ye pathmakers of old, most beloved Lord of life in all of thy names and all of thy forms, Namaste. Most beloved ancestors of our bloodlines, our adopted lines, our spiritual lines, our friendship lines. Namaste. All of ye beings in all realms who have helped us in the past, who are helping us at this moment, and who will bring us help in the future. Namaste. Focus your attention at the sun center, the point between your eyes, and simply begin to watch your breath, inhaling and exhaling, paying attention only to the breath. Now letting go of the breath, just simply rest for a moment. In your mind's eye, allow your mind's eye to become like a three-dimensional screen. And bring forth at this moment the most beautiful form of life to you at this moment. The form, not human, the form of object, the object that is most beautiful to you at this moment. Tuning to that object of beauty, sharpen the lens to bring the beauty clearer. Smell the form of beauty. Touch the object of beauty. Hear the sound 
of the object of beauty. Taste the object of beauty. Drawing that object of beauty closer, closer to your mind's eye so that you might see it more clearly. Inhaling, draw that object of beauty over your spinal column. See the object of beauty begin to melt down your spinal column. Dissolving down your spine and radiating forth into every cell of your being. Filling every cell of your being with his beauty. Inhaling a beauty, exhaling a beauty. And now simply rest encased in the beauty. Namaste. Welcome. Welcome to our Sunday Sangha, to our meditation. Your presence is always a blessing. Once upon a yogi time, in the very, very ancient days, the ever-present Tao, there were two groups. There are always at least two groups. And they were surrounding the ocean. It was so long ago that the only thing that had come forth and projected into the universe from the lotus of Brahman, Brahma, excuse me, from the lotus of Brahma, were these two groups. They were both groups of light. They were both filled with goodness. And they all sat around the ocean. One day, Brahma opened his eye and took a breath. And the ocean. 
we should rip open. And the waves begin to ripple across the ocean. And Brahma awoke from his sleep. And as Brahma awoke, the waves of the ocean rose and fell. The waves of the ocean churned upward and down. Up they rose, down they fell. Little ripples at first and then great, great waves rising up and falling. And the two groups of light stood around the ocean in a unified circle, all equally good all equally good. But as Brahma began to breathe, as the ocean began to move, a slight ripple came between the groups, just very, very, very slight. And then Brahma breathed again. And the ocean began to churn and churn and churn and churn. And as the ocean churned, oh my, objects, forms began to arise from the ocean. First, golden crystal gem arose from the ocean right in front of one of the beings of light. Just like by coming to you and saying, here, 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 it's splendid. It's a splendid gem. I'm giving it to you. this very peace-filled being of light to me, you're giving it to me, and all of a sudden from this peaceful being of light arose a sense of I-ness, ego-ness. Ah, c'est moi, you are giving it to me, and grabbed the jewel. Not very politely, just took it, took it. For the first time ever, ever among all these beings of light, for the first time ever, someone reached out with greed and grabbed. They became confused and they didn't really know what to do. Brahma continued to breathe. And the ocean churned and churned and churned and churned. And out of the ocean of non-existence came the forms of life. 
and arising in front of each being of light was one form of light after the other. The wish fulfilling cow who would give you anything you wanted. The beautiful flowers that filled the earth rose in one place. The skills of seeing, of writing, of mathematics, of science arose in the other place. The skills of meditation arose in the other place. But they rose in places, in spots, one after the other. The pearls of the sea arose, the gems of the sea arose, the gems of life arose. And each form, each object that arose, rose right in front of a different being of light. And each time the pearl arose in front, it's for me, it's for me, and the person grabbed, it's for me. Oh, the tree that will give me the apples that I can feed upon forever, it rose in front of me, I will grab. And they each, the beings of light who had been unified, who had been one, who had been living on the ocean of non-existence, who had been there as part of Brahma's dream, all began to separate. And they all grabbed with their hands. They all grabbed with their minds. They all grabbed with every cell of their being. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. And Brahma began to breathe and breathe and breathe and breathe and breathe. And all of a sudden, oh, <laughs> of the breath of Brahma started to come forth the emotions that live within the human mind. And all of these beings of light with the breath of Brahma were encased suddenly encased, suddenly enclosed in these bodies. They had been light, but the bodies became heavy, weighty, solid, it seemed. And each body had something that it held. This is mine. And they started to look around and they realized, Oh, look. Why? Look next to me. Why? He has, he has this. I don't have that. I want that. Well, she has gems. Gems. How did she get all the gems? I want and began to grab. I want, I want, I want, I want. I want. And a sense of dissatisfaction grew as each being of light became encased in these clashes, became encased in these forms, if you will. And as they became encased, the discontent grew and grew and grew because they, they were no longer filled with light. Ah, but they were. The light was within. But they had turned outward and began to feel a sense of lack. Why did she get the flowers? Why did he get the gold? Why did they get the water? Why did they get the fruit? Why that person has a better house than I do. They were given a better house than I do. Why do I have to work so hard? Do they think I'm not worthy? I don't have enough 
that feeling of I don't have enough. It grew and it grew and it grew. And as Brahma began to breathe upon the ocean, Brahma had no longer the need to breathe for each soul, each being of light that surrounded the ocean, that was on top of the ocean, that was there, breathed. And as each of them breathed, their lacks, their wants, their desires, their needs, their greeds, filled every cell of their being. Until again and again and again and again, they searched. Each one beginning to go off. Ah, I have to go. I have to go to the store. I have to go get this. I have to go get that. I have to work hard to have this, to have that, to have as much as she does, as much as he does. Why do they have and I don't? And the lack grew and grew and grew. And the people began, they were people by then. They were no longer beings of light that you could see. Although remember, it was all within. It's all the within. couldn't remember. They could not remember their light. They could not remember the peace with which they existed. They could not remember the joy and the love that they shared. They all began to look outward and they began to journey. And as they journeyed, they journeyed to a planet called the earth. And as they journeyed upon the earth, their desires, their needs, their greeds, they grew and they grew and they grew. Huh? But some remembered. Uh, some remembered when it was quiet. Some remembered how to watch their breath. In particular, one family. One family remembered. They were the Ohms. Or the Homes. Or the Homes. Or the Ohms. They remembered. And they knew that if they put down everything that had come to them, all these forms that had come to them. If they could just remember that sound, if they could just remember that sound, that all would be well. Led by Grandma Ma and Grandpa Pa, the elders, they turned inward. Always being drawn still always being drawn. They were part of the world. They were part of the earth. They were part of this civilization. They were part of these, this group. Always being drawn away. Always having to come back again and again and again and again and again. And so they did. And the chaos and the chakos grew in the world faster, more rapidly than you can imagine. Brahma continued to lie on the ocean, the ocean of non-existence, and dream his dream, which we entered into, which all of those beings of light, of which you are one, you are one of those beings of light. Each one of you is a being of light, if you will, the brother, sister of Brahma, of the Lord of creation. That is you. And in your breathing, you have churned the ocean. 
And in your breathing, you have churned and churned and churned and churned the ocean until you became to believe that thou art this. Now, I admit I'm pretty fond of this. And I'm pretty fond of your physical form, as I'm sure you are. But you are not this. You are not this. And what has happened? And what has happened? Well, the thought forms that rise and fall and rise and fall. Am I worthy enough? Am I good enough? Will they accept me? Why do they have this and I don't? I deserve what they have. Forgetting, forgetting, forgetting. It's all light. We're all light. You and I. The beings of light standing close in the circle, surrounding a part of one with life, one with the divine. This is us. So we have to do something. We must do something. To let go and to see the riches that live within you. To see the riches that live within you. To see, to know, to feel, to become aware of the wealth that you are. You know, all of those beings standing in the circle, the beings that we are, it's easy to forget. It's easy to say, well, you know, I can't do this. I didn't have that. I lack this. I lack that. There's not enough. What do you lack? You know? Do you think you lack peace? Do you think you lack serenity? Do you think you lack equanimity? Do you think you lack kindness? Do you think you lack beauty? Do you think that life is not just? Do you think there's not enough for you? There is. At this moment, you don't need to lack anything. Nothing. Nothing. All that is needed is to turn inward. Just one moment. Turn inward. Focus here at the sun center, at your Ajna Chakra. Here. Right here. Close the eyes. And breathe. And your entire being will become still and you will see the light. It's not a metaphor. It's not a metaphor. The light will appear. The light within you will appear. The light of the true essence of who and what you are will appear. And this is just a case. It's a shell. It's a good one. You want to live on the earth, it's good to have, good to help me, good to keep healthy, good to work with, good to bless and say thank you. But it is not who and what you are. And so what is the great wealth? How do you find the wealth that you are? For out of that ocean of wealth that Brahma churned, you know, as Brahma first began to breathe, Kindness came forth. 
wisdom came forth. Devotion came forth. Compassion came forth. Truly the three jewels, the wisdom, the compassion that came forth, wisdom, compassion, and kindness that came forth. Understanding of the nature of life came forth. Vak, the sound, the beautiful sound of mantra, of singing, of communication came forth. Creativity came forth. How do you see those things within yourself? For it was not Brahma who caused the chakos. It was all of us with our breathing and our churning. And you know, I'm sure, having been on an ocean or at a pool or pond before, you know, you take one stone and you toss it in, you know. One. And then I take another one and I throw it in. And then I take a third one and I throw it in. And the waves go from a little ripple to a bigger ripple to a bigger ripple. They feed upon themselves. The desires feed upon themselves. And so we must neutralize in order to be able to see. And truly, today, at this moment, truly, recognize what you have what you have, you know, the beautiful moon today is in Taurus. What do you have? You have your memory. You have your memory. You have the capacity that you can strengthen and cultivate and vivify to become quiet. We are here on this earth plane and we are mightily blessed being in these beautiful bodies, you can focus your attention, you can focus, you can concentrate. It's not like being in parts of the astral where it's very hard to concentrate. Here, you can concentrate. Let's try. Turn your head and face it at the sun center. Close your eyes. And just for a moment, try to concentrate. See what happens. this moment, as you're concentrating, bring up the object of beauty that you thought about a moment ago. And see that object of beauty in your mind's eye. And breathe into the object of beauty. Now see it again. and hold your attention on the object of beauty. And now let it go. Wasn't that great? Isn't that remarkable? You had the ability to hold your attention and see a form of beauty. that for you at this moment was the most beautiful form of beauty, the most beautiful form of life. How lovely you have that capacity. And so what needs to be done? The mind is a creature. The mind is alive and it has habit. And it has created this habit they get created, they go in a circle again, they get fed. Everything that you feed grows 
what you feed is alive. You are alive. Every cell of this being is alive and conscious. This is alive and conscious. This is alive and conscious. You know, this is alive and conscious. And if you pay attention to this, or you pay attention to this, we'll see how alive they are. They will become filled with your attention. They will become filled with your light. They will smile until you see them radiate. Yes. Everything is alive. Every form is alive. So what needs to be done? You need, I and you, we both, we all, need to look carefully many times a day, at least once in the morning, once at night. And we need to be watching the mind. What's the mind doing? Where does the mind say that you are lacking, that I'm lacking? When does the mind start to say, oh, well, you know, they can do this better than I am. Or, oh, well, nobody cares whether I do this or not. Or, oh, well, nobody loves me or I'm not accepted. Or life is not good or I can never have that. Any of those variations, I mean, they all come up in one way or the other. It doesn't much matter. It's, you know, they have to be washed away. You have to let them go. You have to say... Okay, right now, you are welcome to depart and go back from whence you came. I'm going to fill that space. I'm going to fill that space with goodness. I'm going to fill that space with beauty. I'm going to fill that space with love, with acceptance. I'm going to fill that space with Om. Like the family that came and remembered and shared that with all the earth. And so this is what needs to be done. It is, in one sense, very simple. And in another sense, it is quite, uh, requires repetition. I was reminded the other day of a, an American basketball player who was very famous uh, back in the 80s, I believe. And, and he said that to be good at what he did, he had to shoot 500 baskets with this basketball, 500 a day. I know a man who's a professional pianist was, I should say, uh, and a wonderful teacher, and he was asked to play a piece of music at a concert for us. And he said, I will play one, but I need a year, one year. And he practiced between eight and 10 hours a day for a year. Now this is somebody who had practiced and was very skilled, but he felt that he had lost his, the level that he was at, and he had to go back and practice that much. And so what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, if you want to do something, you need to do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. If you want to attune to the light within you, do it again and again and again, not once a day for two minutes. If you're trying to observe the thoughts that are rising in your mind and paying attention to the karma that's flowing into your life, it must be continual. You need to cultivate that awareness so you can say, ah, yes, this thought's rising. It's gonna fall, it's rising, it's gonna fall. It's rising. How do I neutralize it? What do I do? What needs to be done? You have great great wealth within you. You have great kindness. You have great compassion. You have great wisdom. Get out of your own way. 
do what needs to be done in your life to neutralize the emotionality of your mind. You know better than I, you know better than anyone. You know how you're feeding emotionality. You know what you do to feed it. Stop it. Use meditation. Use tarka, daily reflection. Use mantra, use ritual. Use whatever skill you have to let go of these doubts, to let go of the need to feel that you are better than another and then end up feeling lack. It's not necessary. It is human. It is the human nature. But you are not human. You are encased in this human body. And so remember the light that thou art. Remember your light. Remember your goodness. And we will go to a meditation again in just a few moments. But we began this morning talking about the allowing you to find the form of life, the object of beauty that was most beautiful to you today at this moment. Now it's important. Some people say when they hear this, well, you know, this is the most beautiful form of life. This is it, you know, or, you know, this is it. Probably the second's better than the first. It doesn't matter. Both are true and both are not true. What is the most beautiful form of life for you at any given moment is what you are trying to attune to. Do not limit your horizon of awareness. Do not limit your mind by saying, well, I always, this is always the most beautiful form of life. Oh man, you really just cut yourself off when you do that. You know, that really cuts the horizon of awareness. Puts you in a tiny box, just like, you know, not, not even, you know, it's like, really? That's the only thing that you can see in life that's beautiful. No, 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 no. Be willing to accept whatever your mind offers up at that moment that is the most beautiful form of life and accept it. Don't judge it. Accept it and do your practice with that. Now, if we go back to the ocean that Brahma was on, the ocean of non-existence, and the beings of light were moving away from each other, and much had been coming forth from that ocean. There was a moment, and from that moment arose from the ocean the elixir of immortality. And at this moment, the story changes. For that elixir of immortality was the hologram. And it lifted as a flame of light in front of each being of light. And it lifted to the sun center, to the heart of each being of light. And it moved towards it, that elixir of immortality and kissed the being of light and merged with the being of light so that every one of these beings, as they grew and grew and grew and grew and grew, that elixir of immortality resided within them. That is you. It resides within you, my beloved. The elixir of immortality lives within you. Now let's go find it. And sitting in meditation,
Focusing your attention at the sun center. And turn your head to the left, exhaling twice. And bring your head back to the center, beginning anew. And drawing the energy from the limbs of your body to the trunk of your body using the sipping breath. And from the trunk of your body, draw the energy into the spinal column. And from the base of the spine, draw the energy up to the sun center. Move that energy counterclockwise outside of your body as golden light and cover your body three times with the light. And now ascending upward, ascend as high as you are able. As you reach your meditation place, sit and form your meditation posture. Focusing at the sun center. See yourself. See yourself in the ocean of non-existence. Seated in the circle The light of Brahman within, the light of Brahma within the circle. As you gaze, feel yourself filled with light. Let go of the human body. Become the flame of light. And as Brahma inhales, and exhales. Once again, the elixir of immortality arises. And as a hologram, it reaches out as light to you. The elixir of immortality arising at your sun center.
the beam of brilliant light. The same beam of radiant light that thou art. See that elixir of immortality once again coming forth to kiss your sun center. To radiate its rays of light within every cell of your being. The elixir of immortality merges with the light that thou art. It merges with your Jyoti, with you, the Jyoti light, with you, the Jiva Atman. You become one. You are one. You are aware now that you are one. And as you look at this circle, each separated soul lets go of their earth body and you see them as light. You see the elixir move to them. You say to them, accept the elixir. You see that you are light and they are light. And you grow closer together. There is no separation. There is the light. Breathing in the light, exhaling the light. Breathe in the light, exhale the light. Hold this moment, remember, remember that thou art the light. Remember your wisdom, remember your goodness, remember the beauty that thou art. Remember that thou art light. Thou art a part of life. Thou art light. The elixir of immortality lives within you. Wisdom, compassion, laughter, joy, abundance, acceptance live within you. Every cell of your being radiates this forth to all of life. This light is so brilliant that all of the heaviness is shaken loose.
Om Tat Sat Om. Thou art life. Thou art light. Remember your light. Remember who and what thou art. And feel and see the gratitude for the immense wealth and goodness that flows into your life with each breath that you breathe. Namaste. Hold the goodness that you are. Hold it. Hold your awareness of it. Hold it within you. Here. Here. In every cell of your being. And if the mind allows itself to rise in doubt, change it. Do something. Remember the light that thou art. And as always, I thank you so deeply for joining me on this Sunday, for being here. Your presence is a blessing to all of us. Your presence is a blessing. It is a blessing to share with you, to see you, to have time with you. Namaste. Namaskar.